The Asian Financial Forum 2010 includes some of the most influential economic minds, including that of Dr. Stephen Roach. He's the chairman of Morgan Stanley Asia. Thanks indeed for joining us today. Can I start really by asking you about the Asia Pacific and China in particular? Now, Asia Pacific seems to have got through the problems that arose in the world, both the ups and downs of the markets, and China has really shown itself to be strong. But where do you see China really in 2010, 2011? What's going to be the GDP growth? Growth as you see that? Well, a, ch a China-centric region has uh, responded to <clears throat> a striking pickup in Chinese economic activity in the first uh, three quarters of this year. But there are two pieces of the Chinese stimulus that we need to think very carefully about. The first is the investment uh, impetus, which has been um, very powerful and has accounted for about 95 percent of all the GDP growth that China's had in the first three quarters of this year. And the second piece, though, is uh, uh, the, the hopes that the export sector will kick in once global trade turns around. I think uh, I'm more dubious on that piece of the stimulus working, not through any fault of China's, but simply because the rest of the world uh, has been uh, weak and is likely to remain so. And I think there could be some disappointment there in China in the second half of 2010. As the investment stimulus starts to fade around the middle of next year, the lack of external demand support for exports <coughs> uh, will be uh, more and more visible. And I think the growth rate, which um, will probably be you know, cruising somewhere 8 to 8.5% eight at that point, could slip back uh, toward uh, 7 or, or maybe even lower. And then I think the government will opt for another uh, investment stimulus, which is not uh, necessarily uh, the most strategic thing for China to do. So do I take it from what you've just said that you allude to the delinking of the European economy and the American economy from Asia? If I gave you that impression, um, I, I, I didn't state it very clearly. China's uh, most rapidly growing sector since the turn of this century has been exports, and it's supported by two factors, the competitiveness of Chinese exporters, but uh, strong underpinnings of external demand. That in turn is driven by the American consumer who is now moving to a slower growth mode. As external demand stays weak, the export piece of China will be captive uh, uh, to that um, uh, development, and, and, and that, that, that's a very challenging uh, uh, issue for China. China is heavily dependent on the rest of the world. There is no decoupling. So how would you view Chinese economic policy at the moment, and particularly with regard to the renminbi? Uh, look, I think uh, China has, has, has done a very impressive job uh, in uh, shaping policies to drive economic development transformation over the last 30 years. But there's a big shift coming in China as uh, the, the economy now be, uh, uh, begins to lose its impetus from external demand and much draw greater support from uh, uh, internal demand. And so the Chinese government in the upcoming 12th five-year plan, I think, will, will put in place policies that are much more pro-consumption than we see today, both in terms of the safety net, support to rural incomes, uh, and a blueprint for the development of large-scale consumer products and services industries. That's what's coming in Chinese policy. It hasn't come yet, but I think we'll see it in the next uh, five-year plan. And when it comes to that five-year plan that you mentioned, would you see the loosening of the capital account? I think the Chinese government is committed to opening the capital account, making the currency convertible. There's a lot of focus on the renminbi right now. I don't think um, uh, it's in China's best interest to move aggressively on its currency just because some of its trading partners are complaining uh, due to problems of their own. 2010 sees tariff cutting within ASEAN and also between ASEAN and China. How is that really going to affect the world going forward, would you say? Well, I think trade liberalization is terrific. Uh, and uh, within the region, what that does is, is it cements uh, intra-regional trade flows as being an important part of um, uh, Asia's broad China-centric uh, supply chain. But the real challenge for trade policy is between Asia and the rest of the world, and in particular between China and the United States. And there are growing tensions on that front right now, which are, quite frankly are pretty disconcerting. Dr. Roach, thanks very much indeed for talking to us today. Thank you.